surface along the basal cell layer. They'll be infiltrating the underlying dermis and they form neatly arranged nests of malignant cells. This identification of nests of cells is very important, doctor, before you write your final histopathology report as a basal cell carcinoma. Sometimes if basal cell carcinoma reaches its advanced stage, they'll be developing of peripheral palisading, peripheral layering of the neoplastic cells. So the nests of malignant cells, infiltrating to the underlying dermis, involving the stratum basale, basophilic stain is all the buzzwords which you are not going to forget. Quickly summarize, doctor, what are the important changes? Number one, in the late stage, you can find the peripheral palisading of the cells. Number two, there will be a rim of mucin which will be there around this important nest. Number three, the presence of the nest of the basophilic staining cells is very classical. And the epidermis is not breached because this is basically arising from the stratum basale. So these are all the important features of the basal cell carcinoma. Let us talk about the squamous cell carcinoma. Most important thing is, it also has got a very low metastatic potential. But definitely compared to that of uh, the basal cell carcinoma, it is more metastatic uh, is what it basically remember. And it arises from the mucosal surface. And it is the upper lip which is the important target of the uh, basal cell carcinoma, whereas lower lip is the one which is loved by the squamous cell carcinoma. Ears, nose, and uh, typically it is located on the face. Now, what are the predisposing factors for the squamous cell carcinoma? Anywhere squamous cell carcinoma, please remember, doctor, it is highly responsive to the radiotherapy. That's an important dictum which you should not forget. Now, certain predisposing factors. Just like basal cell carcinoma, malignant melanoma, ultraviolet light is also important for the squamous cell carcinoma. Arsenic poisoning, any chronic skin ulcer, never forget, it can at a point of time can give rise to the base squamous cell carcinoma. This reason you need to be very careful about. So what is that uh, malignant transformation of an ulcer called? Margulin's ulcer is what need to basically remember. And in the sinus tracts like osteomyelitis also, there can be development of a squamous cell carcinoma. If there is any previous irradiation or if there is any burn scar, they are all the predisposing factors. And uh, those who have are receiving immunosuppressive therapy, the tumor surveillance will be lost. Generally, our immune system will be preventing developing of any malignancies. But if uh, you have immunosuppressed a patient, the tumor surveillance is lost. Uh, and such people also who are receiving immunosuppressive therapy can be predisposed to develop the squamous cell carcinomas uh, is what need to basically remember. And uh, of all the cancers, overall, it is a squamous cell carcinoma which is very common. Typically with this uh, background conditions is what need to basically remember. So it is the upper lip which is the one, which is the lower lip which is the one which is favored by the squamous cell carcinoma is what need to basically remember. Now this gives you the typical appearance of uh, how the squamous cell carcinoma looks histologically. What is that you are classically appreciating here doctor? A lot of keratin is there within this tumor. The abundance of the keratin in the tumor characterizes a well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma is something which you should not basically forget. Similarly, if you look at this abundant keratin in a high power view of squamous cell carcinoma, all these cells, malignant cells of squamous cell carcinoma become arranged like uh, pearls. The typical epithelial pearls is uh, the histologic hallmark of squamous cell carcinoma, another important high yield fact which you should not basically forget. And in the sun exposed areas, you can see on the temple, which is a very common area which is exposed to sun, is a place where there is a development of a squamous cell carcinoma. Now let us talk a few comments about uh, the various cystic disorders and adnexal cell tumors. Typically adnexal cell tumors arise from the cutaneous appendages, pilosebaceous area, eccrine glands, apocrine glands, so many things are there which are basically that uh, 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 the appendices that are there within the skin. From there the tumors can arise. Now let us talk about this important tumor called uh, the epidermal in 